Hello, I am Luca Borghini, co-founder of Rinascimento Industriale, a consultancy firm on business, culture and valorization of industrial heritage. Topic 3, the last, concerns European legislation on industrial heritage. Before starting, we must remember that the European legislation has different types of legislative act. The latter include regulation, directives, recommendations and opinions. Some apply in EU countries, others only in some of them. Furthermore, there are, as we will see, conventions that represent a true multilateral international treaty, which has value in all the states that have ratified it. Regarding European legislation on industrial heritage, we must remember three milestones, Granada Convention, Valletta Treaty and the Faro Convention. Granada Convention, signed in 1985, is the first step toward a common European legislation on, on cultural heritage. It does not directly mention the industrial heritage, but is included in the scientific, in the scientific social or technical heritage. This was followed by the Treaty of Valletta in 1992, but the most important act was in 2005, the Faro Convention. The Faro Convention extended the protection of cultural heritage, as you can read, to a whole series of tangible and intangible resources part of a common heritage. It's clear that industrial history and tangible and intangible industrial heritage are also part of the common European heritage, and for this reason they must be protected. It's also important to talk about the environment because industry is an actor in the evolution of the landscape and the surrounding environment. And for this reason, it becomes an integral part also from a protection perspective. Finally, in 2015, the industrial heritage was formally recognized by the European Union. It's not included in a convention, but in a resolution of the European Parliament regarding tourism. In fact, industrial heritage is considered part of the European tourist offer, like sport, food, art, and much more. Since 2015, Europe has recognized that it's a part of the cultural ecosystem and the member countries are raising awareness on the topic. If we think about it, it has only been eight years since industrial heritage was included in European Act. But for many years before, it was on the political agenda of the European Union and now we will see it. In Bruxelles, in the European Quarter, there is the House of European History, a museum on European history and the common identity of European peoples. There are several common terms on the various floors of the museum, for example, history, custom, great social change and European industrial history. If we think about it, one of the most identifying elements of Europe, interna internally but also outside its border, is precisely European industry. It's a common element and it's the reason why the museum has dedicated a section. But uh, if a museum dedicates a section to this team, and if the team is a part of the common identity, then all this is a true cultural heritage. In fact, in Europeana, the web portal created by the European Union for the Cultural Heritage Collection of over 3,000 European institutions, there is more than one section dedicated to common industrial history. This means that the even industrial traces are considered to all intents and purpose part of the cultural heritage. And this helps us understand how European legislation does not expect to talk about industrial heritage, in fact, equates to general cultural heritage. The protection of industrial heritage and its risk are closely connected to the use of space. In a general approach, large industrial areas such as small factories have a problem linked to their use and consequently to the risk associated with abandonment. One of the tools, I don't want to say that is the best or always suitable, is to transform places into tourist attraction. 
not necessarily by creating a museum or changing the landscape. Since 2008, ERI, European Route of Industrial Heritage, a network of the most important industrial archaeology sites in Europe, was born on this topic. The most important thing is that, that it's supported by the Council of Europe, with a rationale that underlines the importance of industrial sites. We know that the Council of Europe is not a part of the European Union, but it's an expression of European sentiment and has the power to provide expertise and, and guidance to the European institution. In particular, ERI has the function of the new networking over 350 sites in Europe, of which 100 are defined as anchor point and have very important accessibility and visitability characteristics. This network also allows the transfer of good practices regarding the protection of industrial heritage from risk. A continuous exchange of good practices can help provide guidance on the conservation, protection and risk management of industrial heritage. Thank you. These are our email. Please write to us if you have any question or request. Keep in touch.